Hey guys, Omni here. So I finally got to see Godzilla vs. Kong. I know I could have watched this on HBO Max when it dropped, but I tried my best since the theaters opened up around here to make it to one of the showings because this thing looked like a massive event. And if I was going to see it, these two gigantic monsters duking it out in this large epic scale, I wanted to do it at the in the best way possible. And I, I did. I did. It took me a few days, so I'm late making this video, and I apologize for that. So, but that being said, I do think it was worth it. You know, the, the sleep depravity that went into it beforehand didn't matter. Loved it the whole way through, man. Now, this is by no means Shakespeare. This is by no means something you're going to go into and, like, want logical, like, scientific, accurate things to make sense as you're going through it. This movie is just fun it is epic it is large it is bombastic it, it it takes a lot of the criticisms honestly from king of the monsters it applies kind of lessons learned from that here you know a lot of people complained about cutting away from the monsters a lot of people complained that there was too much atmospheric crap going on that the monsters were always obscured and complete darkness and covered in smoke and, and fog and all kinds of junk not in this, man. The, these, the monsters in this, Godzilla and Kong, are both very prominent and very visible. The only times they might be a little obscured is when they're fighting in the water, as you saw in the trailer. Or the, things get a little hectic when they have that carrier fight. But even that, you can see everything that's going on in the fight. They don't, there's like, even when they have like a night fight, it is Obviously, the one we saw in the trailer, they're in Hong Kong. All the neon lights are just lit up, and you can see everything. You can see all of the action in this. Um, some other things that I do have to praise in this is, honestly, the, the monsters themselves, Godzilla and both Kong, mainly Kong, feel like main characters of this story. You know, Godzilla's got his quest. He's got his thing he's doing. You know, people trying to piece together what's going on, why he's attacking the places he's attacking all of that. There's a mystery afoot to that. Um, obviously people perceive him as based on the previous films as a savior. So this kind of turn is catching some eyes, mainly our previous cast from King of the Monsters who are raising a little bit of an eyebrow, which gets them to team up with a podcaster who runs this kind of like uh, conspiracy theory podcast where he's like talking about Titans and all kinds of stuff, really obsessed and diving into it, trying to uncover the, se the secrets of these organizations that seem to be very titan focused um and he gets roped into the whole mix he's actually one of the uh one of the characters that i really liked about that they added into this honestly it feels like the characters that lingered over from king of the monsters were the ones that really felt the most forced into the plot they were really mostly there just to kind of point out the obvious while the characters that were new and introduced mainly alexander scars uh rebecca hall uh the child who has this connection with Kong. I'm sorry, I don't remember her name right now, but honestly, I think she was the breakout star of this thing because she does such a really good job in this movie. And that whole dynamic, I really enjoyed, like the way she interacted with uh, her caretaker. I can't remember her name. Just it's, It slips my mind right now. Let's just get this out there. The names were not who I was there for. The people were not who I was there for. It was Kong and Godzilla. And this movie really, as we saw kind of from the trailers, is very much Kong's movie for the most part. He's the character we're following the most. He's kind. This is kind of like his journey, which is really interesting. He's kind of the main character when, if you think about it, the way it's kind of set up and framed, and it make it gives you this really interesting perspective and dynamic through this whole thing. The score in this movie is fantastic. The visual aesthetic in this is very colorful, bright, organic, and just breathtaking to watch. Again, a lot of the plot, it's just there to get these two monsters to fight. Man, that's really all it is. So if you're trying to be like, like I said, if you're trying to get things to make sense, it's definitely not going to. Um, of course, Rin Sarazawa, uh, who comes into play in this, working with Apex and all of that, they're really interesting. There are some wasted elements of this, and there's honestly some characters you could probably completely take out of the movie and nothing would change whatsoever, um, but I don't care. This is a Godzilla movie. This is a Rock'em Sock'em monster fighting movie, and that's what this movie delivers on. This movie was so 
much fun that I don't care. Like it 100% has flaws. It's not Wolf of Wall Street. It's not a Chris Nolan movie or anything like that, man. But goddamn, does it get you pumped? Get your blood just juicing through your body as these things are just wrecking shop, man. This this movie was a blast. Um, there's some crazy things in here too. Um, I won't go into it. Like I said, I, I don't, I don't, when I do movie reviews, I don't go into any spoilers specifically, but I'll just say that like, if you watch my theory video, I called a lot just from that first full trailer that we got. Um, so I'm pretty proud of that. As far as at least a couple of the options that I did provide definitely kind of happened in this. Um, it's really interesting, man. It goes full on like if you're familiar with the Godzilla films while the Toa era was very was a Toa Showa it was very lighthearted like the era where he was definitely like goofy lighter and it was more like he was definitely the hero and then you have the follow up the Heisei era where it was more back to form where he's more chaotic neutral he's really a destructive force of nature that comes about uh this strikes a brilliant balance of the two and makes both Godzilla and Kong in their own respective ways heroes of this story. So it makes it really interesting to see who exactly you're rooting for as you're going through the film. I mean, I, I really like this. I definitely want to go back and give it another go, another round. I mean, I could do it from home right now while it's on HBO Max, and I might do that as well, just to see if the, how the experience kind of translates like that, because, I, you know, seeing it on the huge screen with the booming surround sound and all that was just... It was exhilarating, man. I really, I really did love this film. It was definitely an event film that they definitely set up. Um, and I, I didn't want to miss it to theaters. And that's one of the reasons that this review is delayed, but I had a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, if you were interested in this, I highly recommend it right now. And it may just be the high of this. This might be my favorite of the MonsterVerse films. Um, is it overall the best well-structured of them? Maybe not. Is it the least flawed? Maybe not, but it was definitely the most enjoyable one that I've watched. Uh, and I love Godzilla, man. And for one, like King of the Monsters, which was very much dedicated to going full bore Godzilla, I really, really dug this film, and I really sympathized with Kong, his story. I thought they really fleshed him out a lot. I know we got a lot of that groundwork in Skull Island, but how they carried that forward was just really well done, man. I really enjoyed this. The way they incorporated the choreography into the fighting, the way they utilized all of their animal instincts in battle was really smartly done. And again, you can see all of the action. And that's one thing I got to praise about this, man. You... You can see distinct personalities and tactics in the way that they fight, the way that they operate, and it's it's just it's just fun, man. Oh my god, I can't praise this movie enough. But yeah, if you've seen it, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below so we can carry on the conversation after the video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, huge shout out to my patron legends, Mandy Sherritt, Antoine Rodriguez, and Ryan Karen. You guys, thank you so much for your support and everybody else who's been joining the Patreon over there. I love you guys. Everybody, you make this worth it. <laughs> anyway, guys, that is it for now, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody.